Casing the Cover is a bi-monthly podcast series hosted by Mary and Jen. That's me. In our day-to-day experiences, Mary and I happen across numerous crappy covers, atrocious authors, and sad, sad titles. We spend a healthy amount of time decoding how cover designs can be humorously contrary to the story within or used to lure readers based on demographic or current trends. Should you judge a book by the cover? Join Mary and Jen on the case to find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Casing the Cover, the podcast where remembering titles is hard. I am Mary and with me as always is my co-host Jen from afar. Jen, how are you, Jen? Hello, Mary, how are you? And yes, we are far apart and yet so close together. I just saw you like an hour ago. I know. I had to drive you to work. Uh, we just got off work, so the quality of this, we will find out how good. Also, I can't <laughs> remember anything about this book that I read. Well, this is going back to like when we first started, because we used to do this right as we both clocked out of work. We did. And we would go um, hide in our super secret cave. In our undisclosed location. Our undisclosed location, and we would do our recordings from there. And so this is kind of the same thing. Yeah, except instead of um, book carts in the background, it's dogs barking. And... and cats climbing on me. My cat is literally laying right on the cord for the for my headphones. So if I move, <laughs> she's going to be really angry with me. And if Jen just suddenly disappears, it's because her cat has unplugged her computer. Yes, unplugged everything. Because she's just like, like, but you're going to pet me, right? You're going to pay attention to me. That's what we're going to do. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have been reading a ton of books. So at any given time, I've got an ebook that I'm reading on my phone that I read when I can't sleep or when I'm on break. And I have a physical book that primarily I read physical books on the weekend. I have discovered this about myself. And For the most part, I've been good lately and only reading physical books from my own personal collection. Yes, we've made Jen take a break in reading podcast books because I have one book to talk about, which we're going to talk about shortly. And you have literally, you have three or four, don't you, in the pipeline? Yeah, because I'm currently reading. So at this point of recording, I just finished reading another Avalie Jerome book called Swimmer. I am about more than halfway through Ghost Talkers which is a Mary Robinette Koal book. Mary Robinette Koala Bear, yes. Koala koala Bear, yes, as you put it. Uh, You have forced me to put on hold the John Green book. Hank Green. Hank Green. Hank Green book. That book. I'm halfway through the sequel, so I am reading a book. And oh my God, it's too real. I think in a subsequent episode, we did decide we were going to follow up and talk about sequels. Yes, because I still have to read... I still have to read the Emily Devonport sequel. So, but that's not on my list. I joined a couple book clubs on Discord. So I'm also kind of sort of going to start reading Dune again, but I read it years ago. So it might be just kind of review read. And then this book Sapiens that everybody's talking about, which I may or may not talk about on this show because like it's nonfiction. We didn't really talk about nonfiction. No, they're more fiction-y. But who knows, if it's like super interesting, I might be like, hey, we got to talk about this. And the book cover. So far, the book cover is like super boring. Yeah, that's because nonfiction. Well, okay, maybe I will talk about it because not all nonfiction book covers are boring. A lot are boring. I'm just saying, some are super interesting or weird. I got weird ones in my collection. It's because you know most of the people who have written the ones in your collection, don't you? That maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's maybe something we need to explore one of these days is, is generally what nonfiction books look like. Depending on what section of nonfiction you're in, the majority of the book covers are just pictures of people's faces. I, well, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Eh. Biographies, history books, memoirs, comedian books, they're all just their faces. Those stupid Rachel Hollis, give, get a grip girl, or whatever the hell they're called, those are just pictures of her face. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, but then there's like all the weird science books and cookbooks cookbooks have food on them yes but they're also very generic i guess so okay we're talking about a lot of weird subjects today (laughs) it's okay i'll cut half this out um (laughs) so so i read a book and the okay so the reason why i read the book that i read i'm gonna talk about this just for a minute jen has a very interesting ninja book that we will either talk about later in this episode or in the next episode we have yet to decide where it's going to come up but the ninja book is an LGBT book. Yes. And I thought, we, we kind of missed the deadline on Pride Month, but that's okay, because every month is Pride Month. Yes, that's how we're going to save this. Yes, we're not late. We're just, we're just woke. Um, <laughs> the, 
I thought it's because I didn't know what kind of book this was going to be, but it looks like very sort of fandomy and things. And I thought maybe I'd try to find more of like an LGBT drama to kind of juxtapose to it. And specifically yours is gay men, yes? Yes. Yes. Mine is male LGBT. Yeah. Right. And so I kind of also was trying to find a book that was maybe um, a female romance because I feel like I haven't read a lot of those. And I also wanted a book written by somebody in the LGBTQ plus community. And so I did a little research and I found this book that looked interesting. It's called All the Things We Do in the Dark. And I cannot for the life of me, I have the image of the cover on my screen because I cannot remember the name of this book. <laughs> And what is it again, Mary? All the things we do in the dark, which just makes me think of, of what we do in the shadows, but it's not that. <laughs> and at some point, I don't really know why, but I was under the impression that it was a fantasy novel. I don't know why I thought that. Um, so that's the book I'm going to talk about briefly. I will say I'm going to put a trigger warning in effect before we start talking about this book. This book is pretty dark. It has themes of both murder and sexual abuse. So if those are things that bother you, that trigger you, skip forward, skip, I don't know, just don't listen to this part or this episode or whatever. Um, because this book is kind of dark. But before we get into the darkness, we're going to talk about the, the cover. Do you want me to screen share with you, Miss Jen? Yes, please, because I want to see this, why you thought it was a fantasy novel. Well, I don't know why. I think, I don't know. I think it's because of maybe the, um, not the cover, but the summary. So I'll read you the summary first, because I've got that up here too. Um, Sadie meets Girl in Pieces in this dark, emotional thriller by acclaimed author Sandra Mitchell. Something happened to Ava. The curving scar on her face is proof. Ava would rather keep that something hidden, buried deep inside her heart and her soul. But in the woods on the outskirts of town, the traces of someone else's secret life frozen, awaiting Ava's discovery. And what Ava finds threatens to topple the carefully constructed wall of normalcy that she spent years building around her. Secrets leave scars, but when the secret in question is not your own, do you ignore the truth and walk away? Or do you uncover it from the shallow grave and let it reopen old wounds, wounds that have finally begun to heal? The summary is vague. The summary does kind of, and maybe it's because you and I are both fantasy readers, but like something in the woods. Yeah. And the secrets are buried. To find this book, I did kind of, we can do like keyword searches on our system at our library. And I did a keyword search to find LGBT fiction. And I think maybe they also had like fantasy as one of the keyword searches. Maybe that's why I thought it was that. I don't know. But I, I was under the impression when I picked it up that this was a fantasy novel. Either that or I found another book that was similar and I didn't end up getting that one. And so that's why I was confused. So what, um, all the things we do in the dark, can you see it, Jen? Oh, that totally looks like a fantasy book. So this, this cover, it's purple kind of a hue over like the woods. So it's like a purple shadowed yeah. woods, like stock art. But then like these drawn gold looking like vines and spider webs over the stock art so like someone's gone and drawn doodles of flowers and vines and stuff over a picture of the woods. looks like into the woods it does it does look in the woods or the descendants yeah kind of a little bit like that too which god i i hope no one <laughs> thinks that this is the descendants and picks it up or disney's descendants because <laughs> they got something coming to them it's Again, it's kind of like the, the whole thing about this book, and maybe sh this was done on purpose, but this makes me feel like this book is a blank slate almost. Like it's very hard to go into this book with expectations because the summary is kind of vague. And even the title, the, all the things we do in the dark, which I think the title is very, the title doesn't work for me at all. And maybe you'll see why when I explain the book, but I get the cover art. I get the summary. It is kind of this spooky things happen in the woods. They kind of haunt her. It disturbing. The title means nothing. The this is like, I, okay, all, like you said, remembering the title is really weird because there's some, there is something not comfortable about that title. It's, well, it's, it's lengthy. It's one of these too many words in a title titles. Oh, I got one coming. <laughs> Wait, which one? All of those explosions are somebody else's fault. Like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but take that title or take the Hank Green book. So we have an absolutely remarkable thing and a beautifully foolish endeavor. They're mouthfuls, but they have words in them that kind of trigger a difference. Does that make sense? It's almost like listening to an old Fall Out Boy song where there are these obnoxiously long titles 
but because they're kind of obnoxious and they use a lot of weird verbiage, they stick in your brain a little bit. This is literally the most common used words in the English language put in a string of words. There's nothing about this title that stands out to me. Yeah. All the things we do in the dark. It, and not only, I was also, while I was reading this, listening to I'll Be Gone in the Dark on audiobook, and that you think I can keep the two titles straight? Like, no. the, the title is way too vague. Personally, I don't like the title at all. Um, and then it says on the cover, Some Secrets Don't Stay Buried, which alludes to the story as well. But I'm now going to get into the plot. So again, if you're squeamish, if you're spooked, if you're triggered, please do not listen because it this book is disturbing. Also, spoiler alert! Also, spoiler alert. Yeah, I'm gonna spoil this book too just because it was a good book. It kept me engaged. It was well written, but it wasn't like, it wasn't the kind of book that like I, I put it down and was like, oh my god, that blew my mind. The ending is kind of, kind of just peters out, which I was really disappointed in the ending. So, let me double check. What I say the main character's name was? I had the book summary up and I don't know what I did with it. The main character's name is... Ava! Ava. So, this book was written with these really tiny, really, really, really short chapters so it actually went very quickly because like each chapter was like two three pages it was very very quick so I got through it pretty quickly but because there were these really short chapters the first probably five or six chapters are about how Ava was raped when she was nine years old the first several chapters that is what the book is about oh my gosh and so there's like one chapter like actually describing not like in awful detail but describing what happened to her and then several more chapters about her kind of growing up with this being the thing that has messed up her life forever and the in the book she's a teenager it's a YA novel which again really heavy YA novel and apparently the author she'd wrote in like her author um, notes that this actually happened to her. She wrote her own rape into this book. Oh my gosh. It's super, super heavy. The only thing that's different about the character in the book is the character in the book gets cut on her face so that she has a physical scar as well as the emotional scars. And because she has the physical signs of it, it triggers her trauma over and over because people go, why do you have a giant scar on your face? So that was kind of a lot. So that's like the first several chapters. And then, you know, you kind of catch up with where she is as a teenager. She's going to high school. She has, you know, one friend. Um, She is, I think she doesn't really have a label. Neither her nor her best friend have labels, but they're basically both bi or pansexual. But because of her trauma, she's never been in a relationship. She's just in love with all these celebrities that she's never met. And she decides to go, her friend is being an asshole to her, her best friend, her only friend. And they both go to this illegal tattoo parlor. They go and get tattoos, even though they're underage. So because her friend's being an asshole and got a tattoo without her, she decides, well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to town and get a tattoo without you. And she... She talks to this other girl in her class and basically has her drop her off. And on her way home from being this tattoo, she decides to walk home from town, even though her mother is a super helicopter parent and she doesn't know where she is. And she finds a dead naked woman in the woods. Again, this is like chapter eight. And then for the rest of the book, she's kind of being like haunted by the ghost of this woman because she doesn't tell anybody she found this body because she's afraid that since no one caught her assaulter, that no one will do anything about this woman who's been killed in the woods. So it's just better to leave this woman to be in peace and not get autopsy and not have this investigation because nothing's going to happen anyway. So she'll just be my secret. She's in the woods. She's fine. She's there. She's safe. And then she goes back to the woods in the middle of the night and finds a man there taking pictures. So then the rest of the book is kind of her trying to track this guy down, thinking that he's the killer. While at the same time having this cute love story with the girl at school that she met and drove her to the tattoo parlor. Oh my God! And the love story is actually really, really, really cute. But it's tangled with this, like, really messed up, I'm not going to tell anyone I found this dead body in the woods because they didn't catch my rapist, but they won't catch hers. That's the plot of this book. My head is exploding. Like, like, but there's this cute love story. What? (laughs) This, the thing is, this book felt like two different books. It felt like the author really wanted to like address this trauma that she'd gone through, which she does. And that does tie into the kind of murder mystery plot. But then the cute little love story, like you'd get into that and then you'd be like, oh yeah, there's also a dead body. Cause then, you know, the ghost would show up. Which again, is the ghost real? Is it her imagination? Like who knows? Because there's a couple times where like the ghost will tell her things like, oh, your phone's ringing. And then her phone's not ringing, but then it starts ringing. So is it really a ghost? Is it just her imagination? Like, what is it? There's kind of like that element to it of, is she going crazy? Or is there really a ghost? Is the ghost want her murder solved? And like, at one point, she wakes up in the middle of the night, and like, the ghost basically tells her there's something wrong. And that's what compels her to go to the, to the log. 
and see the man because the ghost told her to go. So it's like this this mystery ghost story with, yeah, the cute love story and, and then the love triangle with her best friend because of course her best friend is in love with her because of course she is. And that's why she's being a bitch. And it just didn't feel like they were two stories that really quite went together. That makes sense? My head is still trying to wrap around it. <laughs> How do you not have a ton to say about this book? Like, you go for days on this book. Because everything that happens in this book is very just like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. So, like, the way that the murder gets solved, right? She ends up confronting this guy. She steals his phone, and she confronts him. And she finds out that he's not the killer, but he knows who the killer is. And he's trying to get evidence to make it clear who the murderer is. The murderer is the nephew of some cop. And so they team up. She just trusts him for no reason. And they team up. They break into the cop's house. She steals evidence and then gets arrested. And then they find the evidence and go, never mind, you're good. You are you can go home now. And then she confesses everything to her mom. She confesses everything to her best friend. She confesses everything to the girlfriend. And then everything is fine. The murderer is never even a character in the book. Do they catch him? Yeah. But you don't see them catch him. Oh, and then the final, like the second to last chapter is from the ghost's point of view of her own funeral after they find out who the killer is. What? Yeah. This book was a little, a little all over the place. But the ending is super unsatisfactory because she doesn't catch the killer. She like breaks into his house and steals his laptop and goes, oh, here's legally obtained evidence. I'm off the hook, right? <laughs> And it works and everything is fine and she just goes back to her normal life and it just kind of, it very anticlimactic for me, the ending. And her character arc is in learning to kind of trust again as she gets in this new relationship. And then even like the, the stuff, the conflict with her best friend is never really resolved. Her best friend just tells her, yeah, I'm in love with you, I'll get over it. And that's the resolution to that. That's not a resolution. No, it's not. And that's my point is if it was just the cute love story, I think I'd be a lot happier because all the drama doesn't really get resolved. And maybe there's a point to that. I really don't know. <laughs> like that was really well written and I, I, I read like all the way through it, but then the ending just kind of fizzled out for me. And that's just kind of how I felt about it. I feel like this is when we were talking about the Orange Grove. Remember that book? Yeah. So the Orange Grove book had like a lot of characters trying to grow and do different things. And I never really figured out who the main character was in that. And this sounds like the same kind of thing. Like, who's the main character? Because then you finish with the ghost. Well, you, the main character is Ava all the way through. But then there's basically like an epilogue almost of like, this is my funeral. My mother was there. My friend who should have been there wasn't because he's in trouble now because he violated Pearl, the guy that didn't kill her. And the girl that found me she didn't she isn't here but she doesn't really belong here anyway like that's the the epilogue sort of what a weird. <laughs> she would have been out of place and and you know it's yeah it's this kind of weird thing there's also an entire two three pages in the book where she where the main character ava basically goes on the fridging rant <laughs> It's when a female character is killed or maimed or kidnapped to motivate the male character, but it doesn't really apply in this book. Sure it does, because finding the lady in the log was the thing that motivated Ava to do all the things. Yeah, but it's not, it wasn't her girlfriend that got kidnapped to prompt her into action. It was, that's the other thing, is she's super passive most of the book. Like, I'm just not going to tell anybody there's a dead body in the woods, and I don't know. <laughs> It was just odd. It was kind of an odd, an odd mix of elements, I guess. If that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. I'm still looking at that cover going, I get why you thought it was a fantasy novel. Well, yeah. And like, when you look at that cover, like, what about that tells you it's going to be about like rape and murder and violence and catching a killer? Like, it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, none of that looks like that. Also, the some secrets don't stay buried. The girl's not buried. Yeah. And it's not even, like, any of the main characters' secrets. I don't know. I have a lot of feelings about well, that. Well, the secret is that she found a dead body in the woods and she's not telling anybody about it. So, okay, there is a book that I read, Something Live, Something Lives of Somebody. Another long title. Yes, and I didn't even remember the name of the girl in it. So there is a book I read a while back, The Something Something Lives of Somebody Somebody. And it was another YA book and it was about really it wasn't about the murder of this girl okay this girl was found hanging in the woods or dead in the woods total spoiler i don't know the title of this book so it's not spoiling the book for you if you don't know the title of it this random book that you don't know what book it is this is the ending of it okay the ending is that 
the girl that they find committed suicide. That's it. They found her body. She had committed suicide. She was sad. Even though she was a popular girl, nobody really knew how sad she was. She had committed suicide. The book is not about her. The book is about the dead girl's ex-boyfriend and the girl who is obsessed with trying to figure out how the dead girl died. And the girl trying to figure out how the dead girl died is like just obsessing over this and hooks up with the boyfriend to solve the murder. But really, like, he's only helping her because, like, he starts falling in love with her and she's falling in love with him. So it's a love story about them trying to figure out why this girl killed herself, which is freaking weird. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just an LGBT thing. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's, it's a YA thing. So weird. It's a YA. And I mean, I guess I picked this up because I wanted, like, a good what like lgbt fiction and the love story in it like i said it is very well written it's very natural it's very you know these two people they kind of start talking and they have an attraction and they go out and they have a lot of fun together and they flirt all the time and they bring each other coffee and it's cute and and even though she has kind of this past and she has these triggers because of the violence that was against her. She kind of learns like what doesn't like, oh, well, I realize that that is a trigger for me. Let's avoid that. It's kind of like that story of, well, here's a new relationship, but here's the pitfalls. Here's my baggage. Here's how I have to deal with my baggage in this new relationship. And all of that was done really well. And so the love story in it was very genuine and really well written. The, the murder plot was what fizzled for me. And I didn't really feel like they really quite belong together in the same book. So as an LGBT book with an LGBT romance, it's a very good romance. As a, a mystery YA novel, it's very dark and kind of fizzles. So I guess it depends on what you're reading it for. And if you're reading it for a cute love story, just skip half the book. I found it! I found the book! So it is called The Hundred Lies, not lives, The Hundred Lies of Lizzie Lovett. And it was uh, let's see. Now you know how that book ends. Yeah, so now you know how that book ends. Sorry. I read it in 2017, okay? So it was a while ago. So please forgive me there. What's cool is I, I found it in my Libby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I remembered what the book cover looked like and everything. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that one because that one messed with my head. Do we need more messing with the head? Oh, I, that was actually a really good book to read. But also unnecessarily dark? Um, just irreverent it was irreverent because it's about this girl who's fantasizing about somebody else's death mm, freaking teenagers man yeah eat the shit up yeah she was like well maybe she was a werewolf or maybe she was involved in the mafia uh, i'm like okay you're fantasizing about this girl's death while you're kind of flirting with her boyfriend weird i feel like i've seen that in a movie too maybe maybe they turn it into a movie i don't know huh. all right do we have enough to make this an episode? I don't know. Do you want to talk about yours? Why don't we talk about yours? Well, how long have we been going? I don't know. I'm not keeping track of time. Do you want? Do you want to do a new episode? Do you want to? Do you want to start a new episode? I think we should start a new episode. Well, let's wrap up this one then so of my of my weird dark YA. <laughs> Yeah. We will do another weird dark YA. Maybe. Jen Jen just recommended one. Go read that one. Yes. So I I think that just about wraps it up for this episode. Do you want to recommend you 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 recommended a thing. You recommended The Hundred Lies of Mrs. Lovett or what that <laughs> the, I recommend even though I spoiled it, The Hundred Lies of Lizzie Lovett. And I am also going to recommend another LGBT book which we will talk about in a future episode, which we're going to record probably in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it is called Eternal Samurai, and it is by B.D. Haywood. And that is the other book that I'm recommending because I'm going to talk about it, and I totally think you should read it because it's an indie book. And I'm going to say that I should have read the book about the two princes. Yes! Red, White, and Royal Blue. That's what I told yeah, you. Maybe I'll read that one next time. Yes, read that one and tell us about it, Mary. <laughs> All right. So the next episode in 10 minutes. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Thank you so much for cracking another case with Mary and Jen. To learn more about Casing the Cover, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Casing the Cover. To contact us or suggest a book, email casingthecoverpod at gmail.com. New episodes of Casing the Cover release the second and fourth Tuesday on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher.